Hi there. If you've been watching this vlog for the last couple days, you may be aware that I've had some plumbing issues at my house. The plumbers are indeed here today, and we're in the taking things apart phase that happens before the putting things together part. You may be privy to certain busy noises in addition to the occasional dogging, walking through, clanking her dog tags noises, or the jets flying overhead, air show style, as we often have in West Fort Worth. That said, let's see if we can get on with today's installment of This Day in History for October 10th. And we'll start all the way back at the year 732, Battle of Tours near Poitiers, France. Frankish leader Charles Martel, a Christian, defeated a large army of Spanish Moors, halting a Muslim advance into Western Europe. Charles was the illegitimate son of Pepin, the powerful mayor of the palace of Austrasia and effective ruler of the Frankish kingdom. After Pepin died in 714 with no surviving legitimate sons, Charles beat out Pepin's three grandsons in a power struggle and became mayor of the Franks. He expanded the Frankish territory under his control and in 732 repulsed an onslaught by the Muslims. Victory at Tours ensured the ruling dynasty of Martel's family, the Carolingians. Indians. His son, Pepin, became the first Carolingian king of the Franks, and his grandson, Charlemagne, carved out a vast empire that stretched across Europe. 1731, Henry Cavendish, English physicist who measured the density and mass of Earth, was born on this date. 1775, General William Howe is named the interim commander-in-chief of the British Army in America. He replaced Lieutenant General Thomas Gage and was permanently appointed to the post in April of 1776. Ultimately, the story on General Howe is that he was the counterpart to George Washington. Basically, General Howe won a few and lost a few. Perhaps he made some less than stellar military decisions and asked to be relieved of his duties. The composer Giuseppe Verdi was born on this date in 1813. In 1845, the U.S. Naval Academy opens. The United States Naval Academy opened in Annapolis, Maryland with 50 midshipmen students and seven professors. Known as the Naval School until 1850, the curriculum included mathematics and navigation, gunnery and steam, chemistry, English, natural philosophy, and French. The Naval School officially became the U.S. Naval Academy in 1850, and a new curriculum went into effect requiring midshipmen to study at the academy for four years and to train aboard ships each summer, the basic format that remains at the academy to this day. Neptune's moon Triton was discovered by William Lassell on this date in 1846. The first telegraph line to Denver was completed on this day in 1863. Russian poet, author, and playwright Alesky Konstantinovich Tolstoy died on this day in 1875. 1877, Colonel George Custer's funeral was held at West Point. The U.S. Army held a West Point funeral with full military honors for Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. Killed the previous year in Montana by Sioux and Cheyenne Indians at the Battle of Little Bighorn, Custer's body had been returned to the east for burial on the grounds of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York, where Custer had graduated in 1861 at the bottom of his class. He was a good-looking fellow and was perhaps vain. He certainly got a lot of attention. But as my grandmother used to say, pretty is as pretty does. Custer's status as a national hero and martyr began to be seriously questioned in the 1960s, and since then he has often been portrayed as a vain and glory-seeking man whose own ineptitude was all the explanation needed for the massacre at Little Bighorn. The truth about George Custer is probably somewhere between these two extremes. American jazz pianist and composer Thelonious Monk was born in Rocky Mount, North Carolina on this day in 1917. He died in 1982 at the age of 64. American filmmaker and director Ed Wood was born in Poughkeepsie, New York on this date in 1924. Wood directed several low-budget science fiction, crime, and horror films in the 1950s, like Plan 9 from Outer Space. In the 60s and 70s, though, he moved towards a more sexual content. 
He wrote over 80 pulp, crime, horror, and sex novels, notable for their campy aesthetics, technical errors, unsophisticated special effects, ill-fitting stock footage, <laughs> eccentric casts, idiosyncratic stories, and non-sequitur dialogue. <laughs> Wood's film remained largely obscure until he was posthumously awarded a Golden Turkey Award for the worst director of all time in 1980, renewing public interest in his life and work. He died in 1978 at age 54. On this day in 1935, George Gershwin's opera Porgy and Bess premiered on Broadway. On this day in 1938, Germany, Great Britain, France and Italy ceded the region of Czechoslovakia known as Sudetenland according to the Munich Agreement signed on September 29th. Sudetenland was home to more than three million ethnic Germans and Hitler had threatened to take the area by force if the region was not given over. The Czech government initially refused believing they could gather reinforcement but the Allies were hesitant to escalate the situation with Germany and reached an agreement without Czechoslovakia's consent. The so-called Munich Agreement was signed by Adolf Hitler, Neville Chamberlain, Benito Mussolini, and Edward de la Die. Though he promised that by signing the agreement he was pledging peace and that he would not invade Czechoslovakia further, Hitler told his aides, Gentlemen, this has been my first international conference and I can assure you that it will be my last. Six months later, he violated the agreement and destroyed the Czech state. He said it is my unshakable will that Czechoslovakia be wiped off the map. American actor Peter Coyote was born in New York City, New York on this day in 1941. Singer-songwriter John Prine was born in Maywood, Illinois on this day in 1946. I have a link to one of his songs in the show notes. American novelist and my mother's favorite author, Nora Roberts, was born in Silver Spring, Maryland on this date in 1950. Singer, songwriter, actor, author, lead vocalist for the rock band Van Halen and member of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, David Lee Roth was born in Bloomington, Illinois on this date in 1954. On this date in 1957, President Dwight D. Eisenhower offered his apologies to the finance minister of Ghana, who had been refused service at a restaurant in Dover, Delaware. It was one of the first of many such incidents in which African diplomats were confronted with racial segregation in the United States. The continued racial slights to African and Asian diplomats during the 1950s and 60s were of utmost concern to U.S. officials. 1971, the London Bridge, built in 1831 and dismantled in 1967, reopened in Lake Havasu City, Arizona after being sold to Robert P. McCullough and moved to the United States. 1973, Vice President Spiro Agnew resigned the vice presidency amid accusations of income tax evasion. President Richard Nixon named Gerald Ford as the new vice president. Agnew was later convicted and sentenced to three years probation and fined $10,000. 1974 stock car racing driver and team owner and 10-time winner of the most popular driver award in NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was born in Kannapolis, North Carolina on this date in 1974. Happy birthday, Dale. 1985. You might remember earlier this week when we talked about the hijacking of the cruise ship Achille Loro by Palestinian terrorists. Well, on this day in history, the U.S. Navy pulled off a rescue of heroic proportions in this matter. The hijacking of the Italian cruise ship Achille Loro reached a dramatic climax when U.S. Navy F-14 fighters intercepted an Egyptian airliner attempting to fly the Palestinian hijackers to freedom and forced the jet to land at a NATO base in Sigonella, Sicily. American and Italian troops surrounded the plane and the terrorists were taken into Italian custody. Go team! <laughs> 1985, the American actor, director, producer, and screenwriter Orson Welles died on this day at the age of 70. In 1987, White Snake's Here I Go Again tops the charts. On October 10, 1987, the song Here I Go Again by English hard rock group White Snake tops the Billboard Pop Singles chart in the United States. Today, what most people remember about the song is its saucy video. The actress Tani Katan spends a great deal of it in a white negligee, writhing and cartwheeling across hoods of two jaguars parked next to one another. It's one of the most iconic music videos 
studios of the 1980s, and it features two of the most famous cars in pop culture history. The video was mostly unchoreographed. Coverdale and Kalner simply parked their Jaguars side by side in the middle of the set blasted the song and ran the cameras as Katane improvised. After Here I Go Again became such a massive hit, however, directors and record companies deduced that fast cars and scantily clad women were a winning combination. <laughs> I guess I'm surprised it took them that long to figure it out. And they scrambled to include them in their videos wherever they could. 2004, the actor most famous for his role as Superman, Christopher Reeve, dies at age 52. He died from heart failure at a hospital near his home in Westchester County, New York, but he'd been paralyzed in a 1995 horse riding accident. He was a leading advocate for spinal cord research. And I think that's going to wrap it up for us today on this day in history for October 10th. Thanks for watching. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes, along with a physical address if you'd like to add to my coffee mug collection. Anyway, give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share if you found this video interesting or informative. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. On October... On October, okay, with the notifications. And this is why I don't do live shows. <laughs> I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Seven. Oh boy, we got our ears mixed up. Oh dang it, I forgot to put his name. So, plumbing happens. <laughs>